Now there's a couple of ways that I could I could go ahead and polish this up and make it look more realistic. I could dry my brush out with, uh, with my Bounty and Turpentine and just feather it. There's enough paint on the surface uh, where that will work. Or I can mix up the value between those two and lay it in there. So I'm going to do a little bit of that. Let's try, let's try that. And I'll just lay this across there like so. And you notice that that, that begins to get a, a graded, blended tone there for that. And begins to give the illusion that there's a three-dimensional object going on, you know, on that surface. So with uh, also with the cast shadow that comes that comes below this surface, uh, it's darkest down here along this edge because there's a there's a lack of light, and then it fades as it comes out toward the outer edge of the of the shadow. So depending on where where that lands, you can play around with darkest on this edge and then lighting lightening up as it goes out toward this outer this outer rim um, and can depending on how soft the the light is it'll get it'll get very soft along that outside edge so with with that in mind let's tackle this head I'm going to leave that up there just as a as a reference point so that um, we can think in terms that that head is like a cue ball sitting there. And so the first thing to do on, on a piece like this is to think about where is the light source coming from on this head. So in this case, I'll bet you can, you can probably guess that it is actually coming from above. All right, I'm going to mix up a middle medium tone for his face now. I'm going to look at my reference material and squint my eyes. I'm going to, by squinting my eyes, I will see shadows uh, where they fall on the face. I'll see the midtones and the highlights. Now, my midtone is a, a good bit of white paint, which is the weakest paint. And then I'm going to lay in some, some ochre and just a little bit of red. bit more. Brighten that value up a little bit. Maybe just a little bit more of the yellow value. And it's important to sort of build up enough paint to cover. Um, it's very very common just to uh, mix up uh, not enough and then you're you end up sort of hunting. I'll work out of that that's kind of a middle middle value. I'm going to go ahead and block that in. And just like I did with the sphere, I'm going to Play around with, you know, with the brush in my hand in a very comfortable manner, like so. And I'm not worrying too much about about the charcoal at this point. Charcoal will uh, not mix in all that much as long as you don't dig around on it. I used to spray fix my charcoal drawing because I was afraid it would, you know, muddy my colors up. And then I realized I was scrubbing too much between in getting my dollops of paint. So if you, uh, if you just lay it down there and not, not dig into it quite so much, then the charcoal really, really doesn't matter all that much. Um, if you're a scrubber though, you'll want to seal up your drawing with a little bit of hairspray or fixative. But I might, I might remind you as you, um, as you lay in fixative on, on any work, you should do that outside, let it dry at least five minutes, before you bring it into your studio because uh, fixative is pretty caustic on your on your lungs and you know it's a sealer so you don't want to be sealing your lungs up do you so let's uh, let's keep all the fixatives and sprays outside let them dry up before you bring them in that also causes a little bit of a problem over the winter months because it gets cold outside and and then you end up you know, having problems, or you just don't want to go outside and spray with fixatives. So, I've sort of graduated past it for most most of my works. Now, that's kind of strange looking, I'm sure. But uh, you know, if you look at my face right now, you'll probably notice that the darkest areas are in this little under this shelf of my my brow right here. 
my highlighted area here down the nose, on the tip of the nose, maybe my chin is highlighted, and this ridge along the cheeks will be a lighter tone. So working from a, a knowledge base, I don't have to look so much at my photograph to know generally where those mid values are gonna be. So now I'm gonna mix up some of my shadow tones and lay those in as a, a secondary step. I'm gonna take my medium, my mid-tone value here and just add a little bit of red to it, a little bit of this uh, you know, umber ochre tone. And I'll just play around with this for a minute until I get a value that that uh, is a little bit darker. I might go over here and get a little, little umber and lay it over here to the side. That's a nice, nice rich brown, but it's a little, I like it with a little more red in it. So that's getting close to a tone I like pretty well. I'll put a little bit of liquid in there so it'll slide in place. And I'm about ready to lay that in and test that out. Now, sometimes you can also close one eye, hold your paintbrush in front of your picture, and see if you're anywhere near the color that you want it to mix. So when I look at this under his chin, I can see, well, it's a little lighter than what I'm seeing in my photograph. So I may put a little bit more, just a little more umber in there. Mix that up as a separate pile down here. And then uh, I'll, I'll lay this under his chin and see, see how I like that as a dark value. seems like it will work pretty good now on this uh, on this photograph I'm seeing that it it fades pretty quickly back to um, the value of the of the skin I'm gonna put a little bit of a little bit of that mid-tone down in here I might feather it a little bit I'll lay that right there now sometimes when you're you're laying these tones in you think well I'm not so sure that's gonna work my advice is to move on and come back to it because many times your first strokes are just panic strokes. You lay them in there and you start to think, oh, what if it's not going to work? But normally, if you've looked at your photograph, you've laid a tone in there that looks pretty good and you'll be okay. So I would say just uh, don't worry too much about it. Just keep, uh, keep working your way through, through this. Generally, there's a, there's a shelf here. There's a shelf here. An eyebrow coming off that. A lot of times when when I first paint, you know, a face in, he kind of ends up looking like a raccoon, which is okay. Um, you know, you may want to over overstate what's going on there in the beginning, and then soften it up after you, you know, get your bold colors in there. Now, also on when I squint, I'm seeing that. There's about a half tone along these cheeks in here. So I'll lay some, lay some value in there. Like so. And I've got enough, uh, let's see, I think I'll throw just a little color, a little red value in the bottom of that lip. Throw a little something, get that white covered up so I can start to make my, my decisions.